Antarctica, a vast continent of mostly uninhabitable ice and tundra. As the largest and coldest desert in the world, temperatures in the summer months rarely rise above freezing, and temperatures of minus 30 degrees Celsius are commonplace over winter. The Antarctic today is a world full of seabirds and marine mammals, a continent of penguins, seals, whales, and dolphins. But in the early Jurassic, things were quite different. At this time, the continent was situated much closer to the equator and had not yet drifted south. The climate was not quite tropical, but rather a temperate land of cool forests, plains, and hills. In this ancient world, in the wake of the Triassic extinction event, new life had evolved and spread out across the globe, the dinosaurs. The early Jurassic saw the rise of many species of dinosaur, the animals that would one day give way to the mighty Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. They spread out across the world at this point, becoming the dominant group of animals on planet Earth. It might come as a surprise to learn that dinosaurs once roamed ancient Antarctica, but one of the most iconic species of the early Jurassic lived here during this time, Cryolophosaurus elidae, the subject of today's video. Cryolophosaurus was one of the largest carnivores of its time, one of the first big theropods that would go on to find success the world over. It ruled the roost in these cool Antarctic forests, and today we will be examining its life and natural history in detail. Sit back and relax as we meet Cryolophosaurus, the cold crest lizard. Cryolophosaurus was a neotheropod, a member of the only group of theropods that survived the extinction event that wiped out 76% of all animal life on Earth and roughly 20% of all animal families. Due to the age of many of these fossils and the taxonomic complexities of having life recover after an extinction event, relatively little is known about this neotheropod classification. But information is continuously being gained on what these animals were and how they lived. Cryolophosaurus was a very large animal in a world where many species were still relatively small, still gaining their footing after the catastrophic losses of the end Triassic. The dinosaur was thought to have reached a maximum length of seven and a half meters from nose to tail with most specimens measuring between 6 and 7 meters on average. Judging from studies on the holotype specimen of Cryolophosaurus, the dinosaur likely weighed between 350 to 465 kilograms, but it is likely that the specimen in question was not fully grown. The dinosaur was one of the largest theropods of the early Jurassic period, and one of the first to attain the size that it did. Despite this, it was a rather slender, gracile animal with thin legs, an incredibly long, tapering tail, and comparatively long arms for a carnivorous theropod. It followed the general body plan of all the large carnivorous theropods that would come after it adopting a bipedal stance that would help it chase down prey items, freeing up the arms and jaws for killing and dispatching the catch. Perhaps the most intriguing feature of Cryolophosaurus' skeleton, however, is the crest that sat atop the eye sockets of the skull. The crest projects upward and fans out at the top, running across the skull as opposed to along it, unlike other crest-bearing theropods. The most obvious function of this crest was display. It may have been brightly colored in life to signal information to members of the same species, or perhaps to attract a mate. The skull itself was around 65 centimeters in length, from the base of the neck to the tip of the snout, and was particularly slender in form, fitting the trend with the rest of the body. 
While the known elements of the skull are incomplete, we can determine that the animal possessed curved, sharp teeth, perfect for tearing at flesh. They may have been used for scavenging as well as hunting, and were replaceable throughout the dinosaur's young life. The skull has since been reconstructed, showing an animal with a tall, thin head, slender jaws, and large openings or fenestra. Cryolophosaurus has been reconstructed by paleoartists in many different ways over the course of its discovery and study, with some taking a much more speculative approach than others. The animal is suspected to have had at least a basic layering of feathers, which would have helped Cryolophosaurus guard itself from the cool breezes of Antarctica, which may have occasionally dropped below freezing in the winter. Some depictions of the dinosaur portray a bear-like animal with a thick coat of fur-like feathers, whereas many depictions omit the feathers entirely. More speculative portrayals of the dinosaur show it as an owl-like creature, with a dense coat of white feathers that almost look like a hood. It is unknown for certain just how the feathers on this animal evolved, but feathers would have been particularly useful for a dinosaur living in the colder climates of the early Jurassic. Cryolophosaurus was first recovered from the Antarctic rocks of the Hansen Formation in 1991. The Hansen Formation is located within the Transantarctic Mountains, a range that spans the continent from Cape Adair in the north to Coatsland in the south, essentially segmenting Antarctica into a western region and an eastern one. Cryolophosaurus was specifically found in the summertime on the face of Mount Kirkpatrick in the Beardmore Glacier region of the mountain range, not too far from the South Pole. It was U.S. paleontologist William Roy Hammer who discovered the dinosaur, alongside David Elliott, a geologist from Ohio State University, as they excavated rocky outcrops along the Beardmore Glacier. The fossil was found roughly 4,000 meters above sea level, and over 2,000 kilograms of rock was excavated from the face of the mountainside over the following month. The fossil was brought to the United States, where the remains could be examined more thoroughly. The excavated rocks contained over 100 bones belonging to Cryolophosaurus which, at the time, was only the second dinosaur to be unearthed in Antarctica, the first being the Ankylosaurian herbivore Antarctopelta. Amidst the bones of this holotype theropod specimen were an incomplete skull, nine teeth, several vertebrae bones and ribs, segments of the hips and pubis, and elements of the legs, amongst others. Further material would be excavated in 2003 from the exact same site, with more remains discovered 30 meters higher on the same peak. Cryolophosaurus would reveal itself to the scientific world once more in 2013, where fossils from a second specimen were unearthed. Once it was determined what Cryolophosaurus actually was, it needed to be named and formally described. Hammer selected the name Cryolophosaurus, which translates from Greek to English as cold crest lizard, the cold referring to its discovery in modern-day Antarctica, crest referring to the strange protrusion from the top of the animal's skull, and the suffix saurus translating to lizard. The specific name Eliadi refers to David Elliot, who worked with Hammer to uncover the Cryolophosaurus fossils from Mount Kirkpatrick. Cryolophosaurus's remains have all been discovered roughly 650 kilometers from the South Pole, in the rocks that are today referred to as the Hansen Formation. Whilst the region was still cold in comparison to the rest of the early Jurassic world, it was not freezing. Cool winds created a seasonally temperate environment, 
not seen in the much warmer regions of what would one day become North America, for example. The climate has been described as comparable to that of modern-day Chile and Peru, the South American nations that sit beside the western reaches of the Andes mountain range. Freezing temperatures were likely attained only in the deepest winter months, growing colder the further you travel inland. Cryolophosaurus was likely a resident of dense forest environments, and many plant species have been discovered in the rocks of the Hansen Formation. Some remains are indicative of tall, thick tree trunks, typically consisting of conifer ferns, liverworts, and pteridosperms. Freshwater plants have been identified, indicating that water was likely present year-round in the ancient Hansen Formation which in turn led to a rather humid environment for Cryolophosaurus. Around these forests formed a huge natural threat, active volcanoes. Many plant remains have been found with evidence of charring, which was caused by wildfires brought about by volcanic eruptions in the Hansen Formation. Such eruptions were a major threat for the animal residents of this ancient land, and such eruptions likely had a major effect on animal distribution and population. The days are thought to have seasonally varied in length, with the winter nights growing much longer than those seen in the summer. Cryolophosaurus was not the only dinosaur present in the Hansen Formation, and several species accompanied it in these vast, mild conifer forests. The second best-known animal to have lived here is Glacialosaurus, a sauropodomorph dinosaur similar in size and shape to the well-known Platyosaurus of the Triassic. It was a long-necked herbivore that may have served as a prey item albeit a challenging one given its size, of Cryolophosaurus. Such an animal would not have been an easy kill, and would have been able to use its powerful arms and heavy body weight in its favor when facing an attack, even from a large theropod. In the forest undergrowth of the Hansen Formation, other carnivores hunted. Two species of indeterminate theropod dinosaur have been found, both of which are much smaller than Cryolophosaurus. These animals may have hunted the smaller species of unidentified sauropodomorphs that have been found from the Hansen Formation, as well as a species of herbivorous mammal-like synapsid that has been discovered in the region. While these animals lived and hunted on the forest floor, small pterosaurs fluttered through the primal canopies. An undescribed species of Dimorphodontid, a relic from a group of flying reptiles that were much more common in the Triassic, snapped up invertebrates that buzzed and hummed in the forest at dawn and dusk. Relatives of modern-day termites and beetles thrived here, whilst minute crustaceans drifted in the fresh water below. The latter would have provided a quick meal for many fish species, although none have yet been described from the Hansen Formation. Cryolophosaurus was without a doubt a carnivore, and we know this not only from the size and shape of its blade-like teeth, but from the animal remains that have been discovered close to and within the stomach contents of the dinosaur itself. A tritylodon, a very early relative of modern mammals, appears to have been the last meal of the holotype Cryolophosaurus specimen, judging by the presence of its tooth within the gut of the large theropod. When the dinosaur was initially discovered, Rib bones were found lodged in what appears to be Cryolophosaurus' mouth. While these have since been dismissed as belonging to Cryolophosaurus itself, they were once suspected to belong to a prosauropod victim of the theropod, one that was suspected to have resulted in the death of the individual as it choked on the bones. Subsequent studies have proven that these bones do in fact belong to Cryolophosaurus itself, however bones that had become mixed in with the others as the dinosaur decomposed and contorted after death. 
Some Cryolophosaurus remains show something particularly remarkable, however. Cannibalism. One adult Cryolophosaurus skeleton was found in close proximity to the fossilized teeth of a juvenile of the same species. It has been theorized that the juvenile dinosaur naturally lost these teeth while attempting to feed from the carcass of its fallen elder, as they have no roots and appear to have been shed rather than broken off. As the largest carnivore of the Hansen Formation, it is reasonable to suggest that Cryolophosaurus may have been an apex predator, capable of bringing down and feeding from the carcasses of all manners of creatures. Direct evidence of this has yet to be discovered, however. Cryolophosaurus's bizarre head crest points to an animal that was quite possibly highly social. The crest had a few possible functions though it may have been used in a combination of all of them. The most likely suggestion is that the crest atop Cryolophosaurus's skull was used to attract mates, with the largest and most colorful crests attracting the most females. This could mean that the dinosaur took part in elaborate display sequences or dances, where the colors would have been shown off in all their splendor to potential mates. A second theory is that Cryolophosaurus's crest was used to intimidate rival males or to display dominance within a social structure or pack. Displaying rather than fighting would mean that such threat displays rarely ended in injury or death. This meant that the crest could also have doubled up as a threat defense against potential predators, although the predators in question are currently unknown to science. There is also the possibility that Cryolophosaurus may have used their crests to identify one another as a species, which, if true, would likely mean that both males and females would possibly possess the crests. Whatever the reason for evolving a crest, Cryolophosaurus was likely a social animal that relied upon its strange headgear for interacting with others of the same species. While scientists have not yet classified Cryolophosaurus down to the intricacies of families and subfamilies, it has been identified as a neotheropod, a clade of theropod dinosaurs that were able to survive the Triassic extinction event and press on throughout the early Jurassic. By the end of the early Jurassic, all neotheropod dinosaurs had become extinct replaced in turn by many of the later groups of theropods that would go on to dominate the Jurassic period. Due to the shape of the skull and the period in prehistory in which it lived, scientists initially presumed Cryolophosaurus was related to the likes of Jurassic theropods, such as Allosaurus or Ceratosaurus, but instead landed on a different conclusion. Cryolophosaurus was a neotheropod, that was perhaps the most basal member of the clade Titanarae, a group that would eventually include famous theropods such as Spinosaurs, Dromaeosaurs, Allosaurs, and more. The Neotheropoda clade contains several well-known carnivores from both the Triassic and the Jurassic, with the most well-known members being the likes of Coelophysis and Dilophosaurus. The latter is one of Cryolophosaurus's presumed closest relatives and was one of the largest carnivores of the early Jurassic. Elsewhere in the clade were dinosaurs that are occasionally represented in paleomedia, such as Lilian Sternus, Megapnosaurus, and Camposaurus. As studies continue and our understanding of the dinosaurs of the early Jurassic continue, we will likely know more about where exactly Cryolophosaurus fit into the overall tree of dinosaurian life. It is mysteries such as the ancient forest of Antarctica and the bizarre dinosaurs that resided within it that make paleontology such an intriguing subject. To imagine Cryolophosaurus in its environment, a world so vastly different to the very same ground it is located on in the modern day 
Stalking through the conifer forests with pterosaurs hawking overhead is surely one of the most awe-inspiring sights in all of the natural world's history. Hopefully one day we can truly picture this dinosaur with full accuracy as it lived in the ancient woodlands of Antarctica.